Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, with me is the man with the plan, BQ. Say what's up to the people. Yo, what up, everybody? Chilling, rocking uh, my Reno Scum shirt today. It's funny, I actually put on a, I put on a shirt that I wore last week because it was washed. And that was the one I put on. I was like, yo, I just wore this shirt. So let me represent for the scum today, my, my guys. You know, one thing I like about Reno Scum, I got to give these guys credit for that. I don't know if they, if they, I don't know if, if this is an actual observation that they made, but um, when I first saw Reno Scum, to me, they looked like skinheads. And I was just like, yo, I can't message y'all. I just, I just can't. And I think at some point that that word might have gotten around to them. Somebody said, yo, dog, y'all look like neo Nazis. And they changed their look. Like it's it, it, something as simple as like growing their hair out and just looking a little more normal. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like it just took off that one thing that made it look, you know, look a certain way. And I appreciated that. That allowed me to like root for them a little more. So shout out to Reno Scum. Oh, um, yeah. And shout out to everybody watching this real quick before we get started. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some new content on this page. And make sure you hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up so that everybody knows how much you like this video. Go ahead and hit that like button right now. Go ahead, hit it right now. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Okay, cool. All right. So now that you have liked this video um, and you're going to tell all your friends about it when it's finished, um, BQ, what, uh, what's, what's on your mind this week? What, what type of things outside the impact zone have been uh, percolating with you? Well, let's say this first. Uh, don't forget to check out TW's channel, uh, mm. Talking About Pod. Uh, so look that up on YouTube. We are getting that one off the ground. And uh, I'll be appearing on it real soon. We're going to talk AEW, little WWE. So something different for me. So if you guys want to yeah. check that out, make sure you check out um, Talking About Pod on YouTube. And uh, you can catch me on there soon. And, and like I said, we want to get uh, his channel off the ground and, and going and moving and all that stuff. So, so definitely sub. So uh, first thing I've got on my mind, this is something that has been a pretty popular topic the last couple of days amongst the Impact faithful if you will um <laughs> it's growing on you it's growing on you <laughs> no it's, it's actually not i just can't help but say it they don't really say it anymore though it was like two episodes it was almost like Dilo was trying to make it a thing and uh sometimes the wrestlers use it but it seems like it's gone all of a sudden but uh so but the impact audience has been pretty excited that well gut check is returning i'm not too excited about that part but uh they are going to be uh, holding that gut check tryout at a, at a one day with a one day camp at the Arnold Classic on March 6th. So uh, being involved with that, that's really good for for brand recognition. You know, um, it's a it's a good you know good a uh, good event to be involved with. So uh, they're gonna have a booth there, and um, you know there's supposed to be 20,000 athletes in attendance, and they're gonna be holding some some sort of open tryout uh, to do gut check, and it will be. Uh, run by Lance Storm and Johnny Bravo. So Johnny Bravo was part of the uh, the last gut check thing, which the last gut check was not like bad in my opinion. It's just that it, it I would have just liked a nice half hour block on YouTube that we could have right, watched. Right. We're always talking about original content. It would have been cool to get that and some introductions and learn the wrestlers because for what they did, it was good. Uh, but we talked about this last week. When they were, we were talking about the show that they've got going with Diamond Dallas Page and uh, another wrestler. I can't remember who it is offhand, uh, but they're, you know, again searching for the next star. And we had a conversation. Well, they've conditioned us that that means nothing when they do that. Right. So I can't help but to not be very excited about the gut check thing. I would love to be proved wrong. I'm not trying to like completely knock it, but there's only, you know, so many times that you can be disappointed like i had to have a conversation with my kids tonight at um at dinner when i say something over and over and over and, and you don't get produced you, you don't produce for me at some point i just know you're not going to do it and i right. i don't right. trust you guys anymore you know right um 
So that that's kind of how I feel with this too. I would love for them to, with both of these events, find that next star, but it just that hasn't really happened. It just it yeah. always seems like the focus is Slammiversary time. Who can we sign? That's you know mm-hmm. from WWE. We haven't really seen that. Now, granted, they have they have more homegrown talent on the roster than I think we give it credit for sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Trey Miguel, Ace Austin. You can throw you know Chris Bay in there, uh, yep. Jake something, which we're going to talk about him here in a little bit. Like so, there's there's dudes. You know what yep. I mean? It's not like the whole roster is, you know, Hulk Hogan put together this whole roster of WWE guys. That's not what we're right. saying, but we haven't really in the last several years been conditioned to feel like, okay, they're hungry to find that next AJ Styles. You know, what right. I, what do I always say? I haven't said it in a while. They, they're more, you know, concerned with reminding you that AJ Styles was part of the company and then finding the next AJ Styles. That's just the way right. it, it comes off. But hopefully, hopefully this is like the start of of um of something good you know I hope, you know it's you have an opportunity here um uh, to write the ship so right we'll see any thoughts on it yeah definitely and i think like you hit the nail on the head um <clears throat> we've already been conditioned that this doesn't matter right like uh you know the people who won before have not really um gone on to any great success in impact wrestling uh, i believe jackson stone was the last brother that won um, and he's barely been on that show. You know, I don't think he's been on impact at all. I think no. he was on the, um, he was on the, the throwback, whatever, throwdown, the throwback throwdown. Yep. And he was on explosion like once, I think. And, um, it's like, come on, man. Like now, now we don't know what he has going on personally. We also don't know what they're paying him if, if they're making it worth his while to get to those tapings. So, um, <clears throat> there's a lot we don't know, but what we do know is that we don't see him on TV. So we know that we watched Gut Check and we invested in that and there's been no payoff. The whole entire investment for the fan is to see the payoff of the person who we watched get this contract trying to live their dream, uh, work on it, right? Appear on TV and chase that actual dream. And there's been no payoff to that. Now, here's what I will say. I think there is an opportunity here that um, Impact is... Uh, smartly capitalizing on. Um, Triple H used to have NXT in the black and gold days do something at the Arnold Classic every year. Uh, right. It's just, it's, it's a convention among athletes. It's, you know, very well known. It's a good brand to have your brand associated with. And if you're doing something there that can represent your brand, that can make, um, create some sort of interest of something different, you know, at that convention, and again, also get eyes on your product, then <clears throat> it's a win-win for everybody involved. Um, I think like uh, Impact should do more of that, right? Look at the little things that Triple H was doing with NXT that has left a void and jump into those voids, jump into those voids and, and try to just get more exposure, get more people out there to know who and what Impact Wrestling is, get familiar with the brand, and entertain them, and then sh- make sure you're showing the world that people are liking, appreciating, and enjoying your product. And, um, I, you know, I think it's just it's one small step they can do. They got to take baby steps to try to get where they want to go. Yeah, so as I said, hopefully this is um, this the start of something cool. Hopefully it's the start of, hey, yearly at the Arnold Classic, we're going to be involved, and, and we're going to do this when we find the next star. And I don't think anyone was expecting Jackson Stone to be on the next episode of Impact after, you know, because it is a developmental deal at the end of the day. But how long is the development, you know? Right. Um, I was, so right. if you listen to Talk is Jericho, he had Jade Cargo on, who I, I love. I absolutely love her. And, you know, she's saying her first match was on TV, you know, and she's learning all this on the fly. And, and right. Granted, their promotion doesn't always benefit from that because there are there's a lot of learning on the fly with some of those people, and it doesn't. It's not always a good thing, but the best way you can learn is actually do it. You know, right? It's you got to throw yeah, someone yeah. to the wolves at some point. No, that, that's that's totally true. Um, you know, right? Like you need training and you need reps, right? You need training and you need reps, and that's what anything, right? That's it. With fixing cars, right? Open heart surgery. You need proper training and you need reps. You need reps executing it. So, um, yeah, you know, wrestling is no different. And I think that um, in the case of, uh, you know, impact and whoever wins their gut check thing, 
same thing, you know, like you got to get them trained up and you got to get them reps. You got to get them reps on the microphone, cutting promos, doing backstage skits. You got to get them reps in the ring, talking to the crowd. You know, one thing that I think is missing from Impact Wrestling, I think I said this before, they don't have anybody who does the hype the crowd up promo. And that's one thing that John Cena was a master at. You know, John yeah. Cena would come out and the crowd would be half booing him, half cheering him. But by the time he was finished with that 10, 15 minute promo, the whole crowd was up in a frenzy. He was just so good at it. So good at it. And Impact doesn't have anybody who does that type of thing. And I think it's needed, man. They got to find some way just to create a culture of, of energy, right, in these shows. And so um, that's another thing. That whoever is, you know, your gut check winner, they got to get trained on. Everybody on that roster has to get trained on that because it's sorely missing from the product. Yeah, CM Punk, someone who does a really good job with that. Uh, I mean, he's CM Punk. And in the first, you know, year of NWA before, before the pandemic, you know, they had Kingston, they had Eli Drake. Uh, I guess they still have James Storm, but they had, you know, him at the time. They had a bunch of people uh, who really knew how to do that. Uh, mm. they have a completely different interview style segment because their interviews are right there in front of everyone, but right. They, right. they really got the crowd involved. And that was one of the most hyped crowds in wrestling was that initial right. NWA crowd. Now it's a little dead because they have a lot of a majority of the males are the developmental type dudes. I mean, you don't, you never right. heard of them, seen them before and, and, and probably won't <laughs> after that, you know, after their time there. So, um, right. Good stuff. Uh, let's it's transition. Nice. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Ziggy Dice. Yeah. Ziggy Dice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to transition to something. I'm, I don't want to get into too deep of detail. Plus, plus it's also something that hits home for me. Uh, but Jake something had tweeted the other day that he had a pretty rough year last year. Uh, and he, he mentioned his mm. father taking his own life and uh, the guilt that came with that. You know, he said in the tweet that he, you know, he, he basically got a goodbye voicemail on a, on a call that he screened and talked about the guilt that just came with that. And it is something I can very much relate to for, you know, I don't talk about my story too much, but uh, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. But it's it's something that I, I relate to. And it made a lot of sense because we've gotten on, we've gotten on these podcasts many, many times talking about they're not pushing Jake something. He's not doing anything. He's not even at the tapings. He's not doing any angles. And, you know, he's probably going to leave. They clearly see nothing in him. We, we've been talking about that for months. And now now everything makes sense. Because when you're going through something like that and you're going through the guilt that comes with it and, uh, you know, just trying to heal and trying to... Uh, you know, you know, just get your head back on straight. You're not giving your 100% your all to what it is you're doing, whether it's just your job, your home right. life, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, there was a point in my life where I had to really take a step back because I couldn't uh, give 100%, you know, because of what I, what I had been through. So I can really, I can just relate to the whole thing. And it just makes so much more sense to me where it's like, okay, he wasn't really on TV they weren't really giving him anything to do because his mind wasn't in it. And then he puts out this tweet the other day. He goes, I'm finally happy. I'm in a, in a good place. And I remember being in that place too, where, you know, it was like the first time I, I uh, let out an actual laugh from something I, I found funny on TV or something said, and it, it was like the most weight off my shoulders. Uh, and then I was like, you know, it's okay to be, happy and it's okay to 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 laugh and to not mourn 24 7 or, or whatever it is so it just makes a lot of sense and now we see him on on tv right up to him saying hey I'm, I'm in a good place now i'm happy and now he's in high profile matches he's you know been doing a little talking backstage mm -hmm. and it, you know he's he beat chris bay last week i believe it was so it's cool to see that because this was one of the guys we we're like they can do something with him, but we weren't seeing it. And now right. just the pieces are kind of falling into place a little bit. We're like, okay, well now, now we see why he just wasn't on screen the way he was, you know? 
uh, I, I brought up his his graphic last time he wrestled us. Say it was against Jonah, you know, and he's doing his pose like this, and he had this look on his face that he would rather be anywhere than taking that picture. Uh, mm -hmm. That's at least what I got looking at the the photo, and and I at the time I was like, oh dude, this 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 dude is checked out. But you know, maybe it was a photo he he'd taken during worse times, you know. But I, at least I got that from his the look on his face. Maybe maybe no one else did, but. Um, so it's cool. So now we're getting an opportunity to see him on TV, and you know I think that's a good thing. So, any? Yeah, any I think it's a great thoughts? thing. I think it's absolutely. Sorry, go, go, go finish. I was asking if you had any thoughts on it. Oh well, I, was, I think it's a great thing, um, I, and I think it's a big reminder to wrestling fans everywhere that you know we have a lot of access to these uh, wrestlers and their lives, at least what they want to share publicly uh via social media and we have access to what's going on on tv and we have access we think we have access to what's going on behind the scenes uh through a lot of this you know wrestling media um but you 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 gotta remember man these are still people these are people and they have lives and you just in your everyday life you never know what the person next to you has gone through before that very moment in which they're standing right next to you you know what I mean? Like you never know. It could, man. Like, you know, I I remember years ago, um, I was I was I was somewhere, and there was somebody uh, behind me or next to me in line, and I was sitting there thinking to myself, I was like, man, this person smelled like they slept in piss. And then I thought to myself, I was like, what if they did sleep in piss? You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, it's not so funny anymore, is it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just, you know, yeah, we, we just, we got to uh, do a, a better job of just remembering, man, like everybody's going through stuff and you don't know what it is. And, you know, social media seems to only exist uh, for the jokes, you know what I mean? To tear people down um, and to, to get these jokes off. And I'm here for the jokes, but, you know, we got to remember that there's people um, there's people on the other side of those uh, Twitter accounts. And those, those are people that we're talking about. And we always got to remember that they got lives and things that they're going through as well. Um, that said, yeah, I, I did think it was interesting and a little bit random him getting a win over Chris Bay after not having won much at all. But um, it was great to see him get a win because I say this all the time, like it doesn't take much to heat somebody up. You know, you just got to see them yeah. winning consistently. The audience will believe what you show them. So if you show us that Jake something is a winner and someone to take seriously, then we'll think of him as a winner and someone to take seriously. But, you know, too often they were showing us the opposite of that, right? They were showing us that he's not a winner and not someone to take seriously. And so hearing that, um, and also too, I want to say that from the company standpoint, if you know that he's going through some stuff in his personal life and it could very well lead to him not being there at any moment, then you can't invest a win streak in him because that type of stuff is too valuable. Yeah. That type of stuff is too valuable. And so, um, so, you know, so you, you, so you, you got him on TV and you used them, but you know, he wasn't winning because again, you didn't know if he would be here or not. And that's totally understandable. So I totally get that, but hopefully He's in a good place in his personal life, and hopefully we'll get to see them do something good with with uh, Jake something because he just seems to have all the tools, right, to be somebody special on on an Impact Wrestling show uh, on a weekly basis. And so um, I just really want to see him actually get it just to be what we think he can be. So yeah, well, so we'll see what uh, they continue to do with him, uh, but it seems like it's it's going in a good direction right now. So. Um... The last thing we want to talk about before we get before we get into this episode was viewership was down 104. It's well, it wasn't down 114,000, but that was the the viewership number was 114,000, down from 182,000 the previous week. So we we saw you know I think eight or so weeks of trending upwards. Uh, the show has been excellent, and you know some people were like, hey, we're, maybe we're gonna get 200,000 on this next one, and. You know, I said we're likely going to get a dip. I was fairly fairly certain we were going to. I think this was probably a bigger dip than anyone expected. So I think, uh, I don't know for sure. I feel like maybe it was a bit, little bit of a Royal Rumble spike. You know, uh, when, when Mickey James was involved with the Rumble, there was uh, a lot of chatter 
going around Impact. And what I try to rem remind people is just because someone's not watching live, it doesn't mean they're they're watching. And the, you know, viewer viewership was up. I'm sure there was quite a few new viewers or people retur returning to the company or whatever. But that doesn't mean they weren't like, hey, let me add this to my DVR. It wasn't in their DVR rotation before, and they're like, hey, let's let's throw it on now. I remind you guys all the time that I don't watch the show when it's on, and I freaking cover it. You know, I you know I usually watch it usually two days later. If I can watch it the next day later, I will. Um, but usually Friday or Saturday is when I watch it. I this particular show I watched on Saturday. So sometimes some of the most hardcore um, or the biggest fans out there just can't watch it when it when it views i mean that, that just you know so we shouldn't really obsess over the numbers uh the number is always going to be bigger than that there's always people dvring it or you know maybe more people turn in on tuned in on youtube we don't know but you know people really focus on that number it is definitely not the end all you know be all hell yeah um and i think too though like like you said, the, the number's not the end-all, be-all. Like, the number doesn't affect how much I enjoy the show one way or another. We don't even know the number while we're watching the show. So, you know, it definitely doesn't affect uh, how well we enjoy the show. But, you know, for the larger conversation, um, I think it – so as as someone who, you know, watched wrestling from a kid and then took a break, um, you know, at, while, like really while I was in college and then just kind of came back to it, you know, as a young adult um, – that's that's basically just going from like being a kid to being a kid, you know. And I really couldn't, I really couldn't understand why people were so obsessed with the business of pro wrestling. And I think a big reason why I was rejecting that train of thought is because I grew up a NWA slash WCW fan, and so I always felt like people pointing out like ratings was for the purpose of making the argument of why WCW went out of business. And I just didn't want to hear those arguments. So I was annoyed by them. But I was listening to a podcast the other day, a really good podcast uh, called Duke Loves Wrestling. And he was interviewing, um, he was interviewing uh, this, this lady uh, who some of you might know from Twitter. Uh, she calls herself the wrestling chick, Mimi Shells. And she talked about how, you know, she kind of got into wrestling as an adult she used to watch it with her son, but he kind of grew out of it and she stayed with it. And as an adult, what she noticed about WWE is that, you know, not only is it this big production, but it's like a massive moneymaker. And when you notice as grownups, when we notice that anything is like a massive moneymaker, we're like, wait, what, what is it that about this thing that's like making people, you know, just, just fork over their money like this. And so, um, so you pay attention to things like attendance and merch sales and ratings, right? You pay attention to those things um, because you know, just, just as a grown up, you're interested in the in the business of things. And so, uh, so yeah, we, we all kind of look at this as a metric for how the company is doing, right? We'll look at that if we had access to ticket sale numbers for the live events, we would look at that too, because we want to know, we want to know about the health of the company. Like it's just, it, it just, it, it is what it is. That's a, it's a normal, natural thing to, um, to look at. Um, that said, why do I think there was a spike? I think there was a, a spike for a few reasons. I think, you know, I think a lot of people were excited about the ring of honor people kind of coming over. And I think a lot of people were excited about the prospect of Mickey James in the Royal rumble. I think there was a lot of, people that were curious, uh, you know, what was she going to say leading into the rumble? You know, if there would be anybody else who potentially was going to be in the rumble, you know, maybe showed up on impact. People think wild things. I don't know why they would think that, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, I think people had a lot of curiosity about that. And I do think that drove a bit of a spike. Um, that said, you know, this week on impact, they did something really cool, you know, which we'll talk about later, which I think, could potentially lead to another spike in viewership. So if if you were to ask me right now, I think we'll be sitting here next week saying that impact is back up around at least like 150 because I think there's going to be a lot of people very interested in seeing what happened on this week's show. You see that tease? You see that tease right there? Yeah. If y'all like that tease, <laughs> go ahead hit that like button. Go ahead hit that like button. Smash that like button right now. Love Let it. us know how Love much it. you like these teases we dropping on you. <laughs> You know, and the show's been good. It, it's it really has been. Sean Ross Sapp even t tweeted out like, "Yo, Impact, 
I don't remember exactly what he said, but it's like, this has been a consistently good show, mm-hmm. and, and it has been. If I were watching it for the first time, um, I, I, I would tune in again. I Now, we had an, a segment this episode of Morrissey walking through the halls looking for uh, the learning tree or Brian Myers and just playing the cheesiest music you could possibly... <laughs> it's almost like it was done on purpose, man. Like, what's the most just <sighs> off-the-wall annoying song we can find? And then they did it again, him walking around looking for moose. And, and I always say, like, when you, it's okay to put stuff in the background because when you're watching, you know, episodic shows, that, that is something that they do. But the, the music has to match the emotion of what you're watching. And when it's not, it makes it emotionless and you right, can't right. connect to it. It's impossible to. And if I were someone for the first time tuning in and seeing that, I'd be like, what, is, what the hell is this? You know? I, I'm, I, I already know. I did shit. not notice it one little bit. I did not notice the music. Right. I noticed the scene, but I did not notice it. Um, I, I, I had no idea like how the music related to like the mood. Like to really? me, something like that would stand out if it was like something very serious, and the background was like you know uh, wacky clown music. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That would stand out, but I didn't. I didn't notice. Uh, I, I didn't notice it otherwise. Like, I think um, I'm going to go back and watch it again and see if I noticed the music. But, <laughs> it's, uh, but I also think like a segment like that really doesn't need music. You know what I mean? Like, it's just no, that no. you just want to feel, get the feel that this person is angry and they're looking for somebody to beat up. And then he busts in the hotel room and beat up Moose in his drawers. More on that later. Stick around. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would I would connect more with it if, if I could hear Morrissey breathing as he's walking like that would be like yo this motherfucker's pissed off not dong dong <laughs> you know so um but, yeah, or if you're gonna do that you gotta pick a really good track right yeah yeah like yeah. uh you know that 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 feral march beat bum, 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 bum. Get, yeah. get, get, get out <laughs> like, hell yeah yo play, play something like that while he's walking to go kick moose's ass <laughs> bum, 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 bum. yeah that would that would be yeah definitely man something something <laughs> badass you know so there's one other thing I noticed this episode. I've been kind of saying, you know, I brought it up a couple, up, up a couple times where I was saying the show looks blurry to me or as like, I don't think it's in high def or, you know, yeah. it finally hit me this episode because they played, uh, you know, a clip from the Royal Rumble, which their stuff mm-hmm. is like crystal clear. Right. And then Impact came back on. <laughs> right. And I was, it hit me. I was like, I don't think it's it's a uh, height because not every high def camera it, it's you're not just high definition and you're going to look like WWE. So I think they do use, you know, high def, but you know, I I know this from someone who does like, if you follow my personal page, my personal Facebook, you know, I do photo editing like a mother (laughs) and there's a a, a setting when you, when you edit video and edit uh, uh, images, Mm -hmm. which is called contrast. Mm -hmm. And, in this case, the contrast, if you move it, the, the, say, say it's a slider, and you move it to the, the right, just a couple, it makes all the dark tones a little darker and a little richer, like a little mm-hmm. fuller. So something that might be like kind of a gray, you give it a little contrast, and it bumps it up to like a closer to a black. Now, this setting has to be done very tastefully. If you move it too much, it makes all your dark colors start blending together. And that's where it hit me. That's because, you know, doing my photo editing, I I have messed with that. And I I just know what it looks like when you put it on too much. And I was like, I think that's what it is when when they're in post-production and they're editing it. And the way you can see it the best is when when Gia Miller does her interviews. You know, and and I saw she was interviewing Deanna. There's two girls with brown eyes. Their eyes are black in these Mm. segments. And they, it blends with their eyelashes. They're, it's the same exact color. And then, w- you know, when you, again, use too much of contrast, it, it comes off blurry. Like, you start losing the sharpness of an image because the certain colors start blending together. And that's what I realized is, go- is going on. And at one point, Deanna was turned to the side talking, and her eyelash was casting a huge shadow on, like a dark shadow on her face. And I was wow. like, yo, that, that's when it kind of, that's one of the things that came out to me too. Too much contrast. Now all of a sudden that shadow starts becoming like a dark black. 
You, you know what I mean? So it's just something I kind of, you know. So what you're saying off. is who, somebody who edits the Impact show on a week-to-week basis has a problem with abusing contrast. A contrast abuser. A habitual line stepper <laughs> with the contrast bars. My my personal opinion that that's that's what it is to where uh, where things just aren't again when you use this too much now it starts becoming blurry and you you lose like the crispness of the uh, crispness of the image and uh, that's what I think is going on personally right right so I you know I mean listen I think that's that's a really impressive uh, eye for <laughs> um, for for colorizing. <laughs> um, and color correcting I, I you know I, honestly like when I edit things that's one part to just always like I'm like oh god can I just find like a LUT or something to do this for me <laughs> like I, yeah. when it comes to like color correcting I'm just I just don't have the patience um but it leads to having the eye for stuff like that you know what I mean like mm-hmm. I like to take pictures but uh, I have not color corrected a picture ever I just don't have the patience sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh I love it uh, <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, did we have anything else outside of uh, outside of the, the ring this week? No, not that caught my eye. Um, all right, man. So y'all ready to get into some impact? You guys ready to get into some impact? Real quick, if y'all ready to get into some impact, go ahead and uh, hit that like button, smash that like button real <laughs> quick before we get into this episode. Go ahead. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. All right, here we go. All right, so. Uh, BTI, Black to Roost beat Raj Singh, and who could possibly care? So this show opened up with a title match. It was the Digital Media Champion Jordan Grace taking on Matt Cardona for the Digital Media Championship. Uh, Jordan Grace defended her in- Impact Digital Media title against the original champion of the World Wide Web, Matt Cardona. Both competitors shake hands to begin the match. Grace can't take Cardona off his feet with a shoulder tackle. So she changes her game plan and trips him up instead. Grace counters a neck breaker, but Cardona avoids the follow-up Vader bomb out of the corner. Cardona takes control with a vertical suplex as Grace crashes into the turnbuckles. Cardona shows a lack of composure in his first intergender match, but quickly refocuses. Grace sidesteps a missile drop kick, then creates separation with a spine buster. Grace successfully hits the Vader bomb for two. Grace reluctantly, Cardona reluctantly hits the reboot for a near fall in a shocking turn of events. Cardona uses the digital media type digital the digital media title as a distraction for the referee. And then let me explain to you how this how this how this went down. So Cardona rolls out of the ring to get away from Jordan Grace for a second, and he goes over to where the title is sitting. He picks up the title and he acts like he's going to bring it into the ring, and the ref pulls it away from him and goes to take it to the other side of the ring to get rid of it. As he's doing that, the camera goes on Jordan Grace. We see Jordan Grace running over to dive on Cardona uh, out to the outside of the ring. As she goes to dive, Cardona comes up from the side of the ring, and he has a steel chair. Jordan whacks her head on the steel chair and goes falls back in, into the ring. He gets up and gives her the, uh, the Rough Rider. Is that what they're still calling it? Oh, I'm sorry to call it radio no, silence, radio silence. Now, right to win the match and become the new digital media champion. Um, one thing I loved is as he ran out of the ring, <laughs> Gia Miller uh, confronts him and he asked him, you know, she asked him, you know, why he attacked Jordan Grace with a steel chair in order to get the win. And Cardona quickly tells him, tells her to uh, ask Jonathan Gresham what it feels like to be married to a loser. i thought that was really really funny i thought that was really funny and i thought it was a great preview of what we're going to get coming up from matt cardona next and i for one am excited to see it dude i am too i was looking forward to this match uh of course it was very much rushed like they teased it a week ago and then we get the match but whatever um actually it was a couple weeks ago i was looking forward to it and I saw on Twitter. I don't think. Uh, I don't think you would agree with this. Maybe, maybe you will. But I saw on Twitter someone said that they didn't like uh, Jordan Grace in this role. 
And I don't know if you can hear me right now because you stepped away. So I'll, I'll bring it up when you come back and sit back down. <laughs> but they didn't like Jordan Grace in the role. And they said she came off as a, a damsel in distress rather than... I don't know who said this on Twitter. I, I don't remember if I was on Twitter, Facebook, what. It was just a comment I scrolled upon. That she came off more as a damsel in distress than a, you know, a com- actual uh, competitor. And I didn't agree with that. So uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you this here real quick quick tw because i know you had to step away for a second to see if you agreed with this i saw mm-hmm. i don't know if it's facebook twitter i was scrolling i see comments and someone didn't like the way jordan grace was presented in this match saying that she came off more as a damsel in distress than you know a, a serious competitor in the match i didn't i didn't get that i felt like it was pretty competitive i, I, I didn't agree with that at all i didn't agree with that at all um she always comes off pretty strong and pretty tough and even you know like when he hit her with the chair like you know she just fell down like she took a lump you know she, she just took her lump like a competitor and you know she's like yeah. oh yeah that hurt she wasn't like oh i, I can't believe he had you know <laughs> like she was right I, I didn't think she came off as a damsel in distress at all and i do think that's a fine line you have to walk when you're going to do these intergender matches um you, you if you're going to do them I hate when they go to the tropes of, oh, this woman has no place in this match. You know what I mean? Like if you, it doesn't matter if you're a person who thinks that, you know, a woman fighting a man is believable or not. Like once you're in the intergender match, you got to treat it like it's a fight, like it's competition, tell a good story. Um, Lucha Underground, I thought was great at doing this type of thing. You know, they'd have somebody, you know, like um, be in the ring with like, like Eva Lise, right? And they'd be like, you know, and the guy be like, I don't want to hit you. I don't want to hit you. And then she would like kick him in the neck or something. You know what I mean? And and then he yeah. would choke slam her, right? And so, um, so, so yeah, man, I think that like uh, you, you got to maintain, right? The, the, the thought, the idea that both these people are competitors on equal footing. And I thought they actually did that, you know, which yeah. I think is kind of tough. Like Jordan Grace is not a very big person, you know, um, and uh, Matt Cardona, you know, he's he's a big muscly dude. And so um, the the visual of them two fighting, you know, doesn't look necessarily competitive, but they had a match that was a, I thought was a good match. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I didn't think she came off as damsel in distress at all. I yeah, agree. I thought they really made it work. And as I was watching her, I was just like, man, she's just becoming more of a a star as the as the weeks pass. Like she's not someone that they can just let walk away one day and, and think, oh, well, we can replace her. I just they can't, you know, um, they've done a really good job with her. At first, when she showed up, I was like, I don't really see. I just see a strong chick, you know, right. but she's uh, man improved in so many ways and they've just tweaked so many things. Uh even her entrance music, you know, they changed that over time. I, I, I didn't like it initially, and I, I really like the one she has now. So, uh, so this was good. Speaking of entrance music, I could hear the entr- mu- entrance music very clear on all the entrances today, which hmm. isn't always the case, but you could, still could barely hear the audience. So, very, yeah, very. Man, I really, I really want to hear the audience, man. I, whatever they got to do, man. Like, I, I want to hear the audience. If you got to put microphones in the audience, like, whatever you got to do, but I want to hear the audience. It's very, it's important. Absolutely. Um, and I'm going to bring it up a little bit later for another match. But but yeah, this was cool. And we're definitely get the heel Cardona, that which we've been waiting for. A lot of people have been waiting for. And I think people are excited to see what he does. Because I think he's going to go on a completely different trajectory now. Because the whole like just white meat, so I'm, white meat I'm here for an opportunity, raw, raw shit. Like, get out of here. You know, no, no one wanted to see that. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, I, 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 I'm I a little distracted right now because the Lakers were getting washed by the damn Knicks and they just can't, they just hit a three to pull within one point. And I mean, Lakers, man, they're so, God, they're, they're so hit or miss. Like they lost to the damn Clippers last night. And I was just oh, like, yeah. what the hell? What damn. the hell? Game winning oh. shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But it's crazy because the Lakers look like they can lose to anybody on any night. And they any look like they can night. beat anybody on anybody on any night. So that's like the, the recipe for frustration. Yeah, they were down 20. <laughs> right, right. So, all right, here we go. So an enraged W. Morrissey chased after Brian Myers in the learning tree after he attacked, after he was attacked by them and Impact World Champion Moose last week. Security breaks things up, allowing the learning tree to escape. Scott Demore tells Morrissey he can get his hands on Brian Myers in a no DQ match next week. 
Demore mentions that he sent Moose back to the hotel, prompting Morrissey to head there next. All right, next we got uh, Jonah versus Crazy Steve. You guys know how this turned out, okay? Um, <laughs> yes. You know, do we, what, what, what do we really got to tell you? Jonah, so, you know. So this is a concern I have. They're clearly going to have Black Taurus fight him next, and he's going to lose too. Mm-hmm. And they did this to uh, Decay against the Good Brothers about half a year or so ago. I mean, it was it was a while ago. But they both wrestled one-on-one matches with the Good Brothers, and then they had a tag team match, and then they lost that as well. And I was just like, man, Decay is... It's like they're just feeding Decay to people as, okay, oh, no, you're going to wrestle Decay, but then you beat them, you know? And it's like... They, I mean, there's no momentum within that group whatsoever. No, and no. It's, you know... They don't have any teeth. They they need, like... They need a... a, a a new person to come in and be like the face of that group and really give them some teeth. Um, because right now they don't have any, you know, they're a nice novelty act. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, there's no, they, they, they don't look like a, a, a credible threat to beat anyone. Right? right. I don't see them as like a, a legit contender for anything. Not at all. All right. So, we had the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions, the inspiration. They gave Caleb with a K a gift, a new phone with a picture of them as their background. And Madison Rain was not happy about this. She was like, as he was opening the box, she, she was like, you're not going to open that, are you? You're not going to keep that, are you? And he's like, oh, but it, it's, it's the 12, right? So um, yeah. I don't know. Are, 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 do you think they're going to try to like lure Caleb to come with them and leave the influence? I guess it's a possibility, but... I think it's just, I think they're just trying to find a way to make the storyline. They got to drag it out somehow until Tennille comes back. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't move them on to wrestle somebody else. Right. You know, so I, I think they're just finding a creative way to keep them involved. And it's funny because anytime you've seen uh, Caleb's phone, when they zoom up, it has like this big crack in it and everything. So <laughs> now he's got a brand new one, the 12. So nice. it's funny. Uh, all right, so it was time for what should have been the main event of the evening, which was Jonathan Gresham versus Steve Macklin. Uh, the Ring of Honor commentator Ian Riccoboni joined Tom Hannafin and Matthew Raywald for his non-title rematch that will be contested under traditional rules. Unlike a pure rules match, there's no code of honor to begin the contest, allowing Macklin to charge at Gresham from the opening bell. Gresham takes Macklin off his feet and begins to wear him down with a series of headlocks. Macklin drives him throat first into the ropes to regain control. Macklin hits a strong back elbow for two. Both men exchange strikes in the middle of the ring. Macklin catches him with a mid-air power slam for another near fall. Gresham is on the ropes, but Macklin unloads him, unloads on him anyway, causing the disqualification. So, uh, ROH champion Jonathan Gresham defeated Steve Macklin by disqualification. And after the match, Macklin looks to add insult to injury when Honor No More comes to the aid of Gresham. Honor No More wants Gresham to join them in the ring, but he retreats up the ramp instead. Josh Alexander makes his entrance for his match against Vincent next. So we'll just keep rolling here. Well, I got a few things I want to say here. Real oh, quick. okay. Go ahead. Go, go, go. So- I promised uh, I was going to I was going to say this. First of all, it's great to like re- review like, excuse me, review the show on a weekly basis and not complain about the commentary. So that that's cool. But speaking of the commentary, uh on Twitter, I don't even know it's a bunch of special characters. I we talk all the time on Twitter, but I think he I think it's Dave Revolution. I used to think it said Revolution, but it's all special <laughs> characters, so it's hard to read. I said I was going to name drop him. I didn't do a very good job of it. But he sent me a tweet the other day saying, Honor No More injured D'Lo so he couldn't do commentary. And then they injured Ray Walt into commentary. So <laughs> yeah. it a whole lot of sense. You know? <laughs> so, um, oh, man. But the one thing I want to point out, I enjoyed the match. They, they've had a match already, so we don't, we don't have to get into it too much. Uh, they, Ian Riccoboni really hammered home like the pure rules. This isn't pure rules, and kept talking about pure rules almost the entire match and it's funny because the rules aren't that different not not to the point that would completely change you know drastically change the outcome of a match but that's kind of the story he was trying to put out there everyone expected Macklin to win and 
I saw social media chatter that people really liked Macklin's entrance. The, um, you know, the kind of the machine gun and the, and the, the lights flickering in and out. And that's a, that's a thing I've been talking about for a while. It's like, where's the cool entrances? I always say, where's the cool moves? Where's the cool entrances? Where's the different entrances? And uh, people really liked what they did with him. Said it was very, you know, felt like a star uh, the way that they did that. So it's nice to see them, you know, making those adjustments. But, you know, um, Macklin loses again, though. I, didn't, I, don't th- I, I think everyone expected, okay, it's a non-title match. He's going to win. And the um, honor no more stuff. It was interesting. I was curious why they were jumping a heel, but then it made sense. They're you know, all right, you know, they're saving one of their own, you mm-hmm. know. So cool, cool. But all right, that's all I. But got. you still would think that's got to be going somewhere, right? Like some sort of story on whether or not he's going to, you know, stick with them. It's, yeah, it's going some direction with that. Right, because like now, where do you, which, what direction do you think it's going? I mean, like I, I, I would have to ultimately guess that this is gonna lead to Jonathan Gresham going good guy, good guy, good guy. Ah, I'm turning. I think it's just leading to him maybe dropping the belt to one of them, personally. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see. You know what? Actually, now that you mention it, I could see something like that. I could see something like that because they have. You know, they're starting to have a lot of people in that group. And, you know, I could see one of them saying, hey, I want to challenge for that ROH title. And then, you know, that allows the ROH people to be like, hey, one of our own still has it. So right. I think that's fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, all right. Let's see where we're at here. All right. So uh, we had Josh Alexander versus Vincent with Honor No More before they collide in a high stakes showdown at No Surrender. Team Impact's Josh Alexander battles Honor No More's Vincent to build momentum. Alexander hit a running crossbody off uh, to the back of Vincent, sending him crashing to the floor. Maria distract the referee, allowing Mike Bennett to hook Alexander's leg. Vincent capitalizes with a dive to the outside. Former owner of ROH, Carrie Silken, is seen watching the match from ringside. Alexander counters a submission into a vertical suplex to create separation. Alexander rolls through and connects with the German suplex for two. Vincent uses the referee as a shield, then hits a side Russian leg sweep on Alexander. Vincent hits the red rum off the top rope, but Alexander kicks out at two. (laughs) Alexander locks in the ankle lock as members of Honor No More get up on the apron. Alexander fights them off, but almost gets pinned by Vincent as a result. Team Impact's Rich Swan, Chris Saban, Ryan, and Rhino, uh, even the odds as they fight off Honor No More at ringside. Alexander successfully locks in the ankle, ankle lock to win by submission. So that was a lot. Uh, then out of nowhere, Kenny King jumps Alexander from behind and lays him out in the middle of the ring. King joins Honor No More on the ramp as they retreat to the back. Woo! Oh, so in, in in the back, we had an interview with Kenny King revealing that he's the newest member of Honor No More. What'd you think about this right here? Uh, so, uh, man, unfortunately, the Kenny King thing was ruined for me. Uh, I say ruined. I didn't watch the show when it live, so it's, when it was live, so it's only my fault. But I just I, I wasn't you know surprised by it because I saw something on Twitter or on Facebook, I should say. Uh, I'm not. As as good as Josh Alexander match as good as matches he puts on, I'm never like super interested in his matches. Uh, it, it goes back to what we talk about the entrance and the music. It just it just you know doesn't do a whole lot for me. I wasn't super impressed with Vincent. Like I thought, I don't understand his character because I didn't really watch enough ROH to see him, and I wasn't like super impressed. Uh, didn't feel like he did anything that we don't normally see on a on a week to week basis. But people were also asking on social media what happened to Heath and Willie Mack. But I guess there was COVID protocol, so a bunch of people weren't at the tapings, which mm-hmm. is probably why Havoc wasn't there. I was asking last week. So it kind of sucks for them if they were initially supposed to be in this. Because you remember Saban and Chris, uh, Josh Alexander, I don't know why I call him Chris, but uh, you know, Chris Saban and Josh Alexander, they were just like randomly inserted to this thing. And people were like, what the hell, you know? I wish they would have done something on screen to explain that, but it's whatever. I, I was really excited when Kenny King came out, and I've, I've brought up many times I'm a big uh, uh, viewer of the Bachelor franchise, 
And yeah. Kenny is part of that family because if, if you guys don't know, he was on a season of The Bachelorette a couple years ago. And then he did Bachelor in Paradise after that. And he was very, very liked by the audience. Uh, very, very entertaining. And um, I'm happy was to see him. Was he on the season with uh, Rachel Lindsay? Was Rachel yeah. Lindsay the best one? Okay. Yeah. She's, a, she's, she's kind of, she blew up, man. She had a nice glow up after The Bachelor. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, she was an attorney at the time, and she was able to quit doing that. I mean, nice. <laughs> she's, yeah, she, she's blown up big time. Um, but yeah, he he was involved with that. He's very, you know, very entertaining. And he was one of the dudes that I really wanted to see come from Ring of Honor. When they initially put this graphic out, Team Impact versus Honor No More, Maria Canellis was in it. And I said, well, she's not going to wrestle. And you said she distracted the referee. I think she also distracted the viewers at home when she hopped on the apron. But uh, I was like, surely they're going to replace her with a dude. I mean, it, it just only made sense. And... um you know, it looks like Kenny King is a guy. So if there's anyone that I that I wanted to see in that spot right there, it was him. So I was I was really I'm really excited to see him. And you know, he's also making a return to the company. He hasn't said the nicest things about Impact over the years, but it was more having to do with you know his pay and and the frustrations of that than anything. You know, right? But um, I'm 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 excited. I'm I'm very excited for him to be part of the group. And they're gonna win at no surrender. I mean, spoiler alert. I, I, I can't imagine they're gonna. That would be just the. They're not gonna kill the Nexus again. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously, these guys are gonna win at no surrender. Um. And I, I think, like, when it comes to Kenny King, I didn't see the spoiler, and this was actually a great, um. A, a great reminder to stay away from spoilers because if I had seen the spoiler, I'd been like, Kenny King, eh, it's not like an earth shattering move, but seeing it happen, I was like, Oh, Kenny King, you know right. what I mean? So like just being in the moment makes all the difference. It really does. It really does. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Kenny King can do. Um, he's somebody again, who has all the tools, man, all the tools to be a big deal. And it's all about, if they choose to put him in that position and see what he can do. You know what I mean? A lot of times you got to give somebody a chance and try to, you know, accentuate their positives and hide their flaws with what, what your TV work. So, um, you know, I don't see why Kenny King can't be a feature player for impact wrestling. Totally agree. Um, all right. So, uh, let's see. We got W. Morrissey. Uh, as I mentioned, he went to Moose's hotel room and beat him up while Moose is in his underwear. Um, so the ladies <laughs> probably got a little, you know, eye full of something. <laughs> um, then back in the ring, we got one of Punjab's hottest young athletes, Bupinder Gujar, arriving to battle John Schuyler. Gujar took control in the early going with a leg drop to the back of the neck. Schuyler hangs on Gujar on the ropes, and then hits a side Russian leg sweep to turn turn the tide. Gujar hits a springboard elbow for two. Gujar hits a, spa, a spear off the second rope to pick up the big victory. After the match, Raj Singh comes in the ring to congratulate Gujar, but Gujar wanted no part of it. So I really like that because it was, you know, telling us that we're not going to just run back the Desi hit squad with a new dude. So right. I actually did like that. Um, good. Yes. I, I, I found him pretty impressive in the ring. Uh, I, I, I've been wanting to see him for a while. He's popped up on impact a couple times. I think I said last week, or maybe I just said in a Twitter chat that I'm fairly certain. So he wrestled on impact once before it was when, uh, Gama Singh was kind of threatening. I might, I, I might replace one of you guys, mm -hmm. and um, and Bupinder as Bupinder Singh. He he followed me on Twitter by the way today. Uh, Bupinder Kujar. So him and him and Chris Bay are my recent follows. Nice. So, but he he um he was presented as a possible member of Desi Hit Squad, and he was a part of the original Desi Hit Squad that didn't come to fruition, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, like again, I don't know if I said this last week or was on Twitter. I'm pretty sure in that match he sold for the uh, the referee with no legs because he was the he was the ref for that match, and I'm fairly certain he took a 
like you know, because that dude wrestled also. He took some kind of splash from him mm. after the match, so it was like okay. okay. And what I was told is that he was going to return around uh, lockdown, since I was in uh, BCW territory, and then obviously that didn't happen. So uh, he's also got pretty good music, not as good as Raj Singh. Raj Singh may have the best ever, uh, but he, but people seem to like him online, and I thought it really, I, I thought I thought it was really odd when it was heel versus heel with John Skyler, and I was like, well, he's kind of wrestling like a baby face, so it was just odd. And then Raj Singh comes down, and you know, he again didn't really want anything to do with him, so. You're right. They're not running the Desi Hit Squad back. I would have preferred them on the same team personally, but you know, we'll see. This could be something kind of interesting. He just came across like a baby face during the match, so hmm. maybe that's what they're gonna do. You know, we'll see. But he's been he's been working. You know, I'm a Facebook friend of his, so I've seen um, a lot of his videos. He's been working pretty hard to like be to get to Impact and be relevant in Impact for a while. So. Nice. Good stuff. So that's good, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this is this comes out to be good TV, which is all we really want anyway. All yeah. right, so we got to see footage of Knockouts World Champion Mickey James making history by competing in this past Saturday's WWE Royal Rumble match. In a follow-up interview with Gia Miller, James is reflecting on her monumental moment when Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans interrupt. Tasha rubs salt in the wound after James came up short in the WWE Royal Rumble match and vows to defeat her for the Knockouts World title at No Surrender. Chelsea Green comes to Mickey James's aid and James grants her a highly requested singles match next week. So my immediate thoughts after this happened was this is the setup for Chelsea Green to turn heel to. Oh, because yeah. Because she has been going out of her way above and beyond to be extra nice to Mickey uh, just really befriend her as much as possible and asking for uh, a title shot. And again, jumping in front of an opportunity to get a title shot. I totally see her heel turn coming. Absolutely. And uh, I also t- totally saw that I never noticed before that she got her, her girls done. So uh, it was pretty obvious this time around when she came out. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, it's it's crystal clear, man. It's crystal clear. That's where they're they're going with it. I don't expect uh, Tasha Steeles. I know some people do. Tasha Steeles is not going to win the title from her. Uh, there's, I'm I'm sure of it. They don't usually. Impact's number one contenders when they win those big matches don't typically win the belt. Like it's, mm. it just has you know, like there was a point when you would watch someone win the Royal Rumble. You're like, okay, well they're going to win the title. Like it's just going to happen. And then you know after a while they started losing, and and now you don't know. But, you know, WWE is a company that when someone won one of those special number one contender matches, they typically were, typically were going on to win the belt. You know, this was years and years ago. And I kind of feel like with Impact, you know, someone wins a number one contender battle royal or this and this, like they, they don't ultimately win. So I don't expect Tasha Steeles to win. I think that Ultimate X took her to the next level. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't think she's not going to beat Mickey. There's Mickey's has too much brand recognition. Her her brand is too strong. They're going to milk that title reign as long as they possibly can. And even though the average wrestling fan likes to see the star drop the belt to an up and comer to ex- to take him to the next level, this is that's not what's going to happen here. <laughs> if Mickey drops it, it's going to be someone semi close to her level in name value, which you probably can't get very close to her, but it's it's going to be something along those lines, or it's going to be someone that has a WWE tie-in like Chelsea Green does. It's not going to be like an Impact homegrown star. It's going to be Mickey James for the title. I I can, um, I can almost promise you that. I think that would suck. Um, I just, I think Tasha Steele is like, why not? You know, but I could totally see they do something where Chelsea Green turns on her this week. Then Mickey goes to beat Tasha Steeles, and then Chelsea Green turns on Mickey again and is challenging her for the title. I was gonna say at WrestleMania, <laughs> um, uh, but it's challenging her at the title coming up very soon. So I think that um, 
I could totally see a situation where, you know, the person who takes that title off Mickey James is, um, uh, what's her name? Good God. Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Masha Slamovich uh, versus Casey Lennox. Slamovich hits a roundhouse kick followed by a running boot in the corner. Slamovich hits the Russian death device to pick up a quick win and remain undefeated. Uh, Gia Miller interviewed reigning ROH Women's World Champion and AAA Reina de Reina's champion, Deanna Perrazzo. Despite not being the current Knockouts World Champion, Perrazzo says that she is the Knockouts Division and says that she's issuing an open challenge for either of her titles next week. The word either felt really important there. What do you think? Did you have any thoughts here? I really liked the interview. I liked um, I liked what Deanna had to say. Her promos are getting pretty good. Uh, they've always been decent. You know, her voice can be a little shaky, but I, th- I thought this was excellent. And I think I know who's who's going to answer it because it was one of those kind of spoilers that people were talking about a lot. Uh, when the taping started, so I think I know who it is. I don't think it's going to be a long ster- long-term person in the company. I think she lives locally to there, and mm. that's basically what happened. Um, Casey Lennox, though, she's hotter than a mm-hmm. smoking pistol, man. Um, she wasn't on screen very long, but no, but it, but but it was it was good. I I, I enjoyed it. I'm <laughs> really looking forward to seeing the match. But you're you're right. It's interesting. What title is it going to be for? So then it yeah, always, yeah. almost makes me think the person that is, I think it is, maybe it's not. Maybe it's someone that has some kind of tie into Ring yeah, of Honor yeah. or, uh, you know, AAA. I don't know. So we'll see. You we'll mentioned see um, you mentioned Chelsea Green getting a boob job. And I think it's actually <laughs> an interesting thing just to <clears throat> kind of point out here. And I say this, you know, with all respectfulness, you know what I mean? Because if y'all listen to the show, you know I'm not really about. I try to stay away from objecting women in public uh, forums. That said, you know, if you put it out there, I think you put it out there for conversation. So that said, um, no, I just, I just, I think that, um, you know, uh, Chelsea Green, man, if you see like some of the pictures of her and, and Matt Cardona on the indies, they just look like that couple that, you know, like you knew them in high school or college, or you see them at the gym all the time. And they just think they are the hottest shit, like in the world. And like, you just see these two people and they're just so in love with themselves and they may or may not be good looking people like in actuality, but they think they're the most beautiful things that's just ever happened. And that's what I see when I look at her and Matt Cardona and their act, they play as heels. So like, you know, Chelsea Green sexy in it up and you know, whatever. Um, like, I, I think it's totally gonna go with what, we're gonna, with what we're gonna see coming next from her. Absolutely. That they would do a that would be a great role for them. That that exact what you're saying. Um, all right. So we had Bullet Club, consisting of Jay White, Chris Bay, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa versus Mike Bailey, Jake Something, Ace Austin, and Madman Fulton. Mike Bailey and Jake Something look to coexist with Ace Austin and Madman Fulton as they face the Bullet Club who beat them down last week on Impact. White hits Bailey with a series of vertical suplexes as Bay and Gorillas of Destiny springboard on top uh, to, con- to inflict more damage. The match begins to break down as Fulton catches Bay midair and drives him into the apron. Fulton takes Bay off his feet with a crossbody off the second rope. Bay avoids the springboard kick from Austin, then hits a flying forearm uh, to create some separation. Bailey hits a running corkscrew splash for two. White comes back with a thunderous urinagi for another near fall. Bailey heads to his corner as Austin tags magic uh, tags himself in. Gorillas of Destiny take out Fulton with a signature move of the Good Brothers, the Magic Killer. Austin gets his knees up on a frog splash attempt from Bay. Austin chooses not to tag in something, but something chops him in the chest to force the tag. Something <clears throat> is on fire, but quickly falls victim to the Bullet Club's numbers game. White hits something with the half Nelson suplex, followed by the art of finesse from Bay to win. <clears throat> so this was a this was a cool main event. There was a couple of things I, I noticed here. They told a very little interesting 
story here with them not wanting to take tag Jake in. Oh, let me hold on real quick. After the yeah. match, the unholy alliance of the Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, and Violent by Design attack the Bullet Club as Impact goes off the air. Okay, go. That's right. That's right. But there's a couple things in it. They, they told, you know, it was just part of the story where they, they didn't want to tag Jake in. They're trying to be on the good side of Mike Bailey, but they don't give a shit about Jake. So I thought they did a really good job playing into that because I was wondering what's the dynamic going to be with the, the baby face and heel team. And they didn't really, re- they to an extent wrestled as baby faces because someone has to. But it seemed like they're, they're, they're really still kind of keeping the heel thing going. Uh, but still trying to be on Mike Bailey's good side. So it's kind of interesting. So I just, I I like that dynamic of it. And the second thing that I thought was cool was that they, what I say last week when the show kicked off is Jake Summing versus Chris Bay. And I said it was a match between two people who both needed the win and both didn't need to lose. And Jake got the win. It was another loss for Chris Bay. And he actually avenged the loss this week, the way that they set up the finish of the match. You know, uh, holding him for the art of finesse. It's like he got his win back. So it wasn't just like, okay, Chris Bay takes a loss and then the Bullet Club Club comes out here and Jay White gets the pin. I mean, they they let Chris Bay do it. And it, it, uh, I thought, as you said, you can heat people up very fast if you do it the right way. Uh, Now we're not thinking about Chris Bay's loss from last week. Now we're thinking he was the one that was standing tall at the end. So I I thought it was cool. And as I said last week, I think the Gorillas of Destiny come off very cool. Uh, Just in a way, most of the Impact wrestlers don't, you know. So I kind of dig They look like they want to curse so bad. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, any of the promos they do in New Japan, but they drop the F word like it's nothing in New Japan. (laughs) Yeah, because they don't have the same like like FCC standards that got it over here. Yeah, that, that's that's probably very possible. The the angle after the match I didn't care for because we just got that two matches ago with with um, Honor No More, right. and you start becoming AEW when you do that because mm. you know I talk a lot about I watch I listen to Jim Cornette, and he says there is an angle after every single match he calls it an afterbirth there's always an afterbirth (laughs) nobody just wins the match and then the opponent rolls out of the ring and walks away right it's the heel always attacks or if they have heels at ringside they always attack the person just like their interviews are always someone's always getting interrupted and attacking (laughs) every single one so I, i just don't want them to see them go that route because that's a very cheap, easy thing to do. But we just saw Honor No More come down. Granted, two different stories, but we saw the gang warfare attack, and then we saw it again. You know, so uh, most likely we're going to get Bullet Club versus uh, uh, Re- uh, Rebellion, uh, Violent by Design, and, and the Good Brothers. You know, most likely. Either they're going to chop one guy off Violent by Design, or you know, Hikaleo or El Fantasmo might might join in. Who knows? But we're yeah. clearly going to get that because we're getting Gorillas of Destiny versus Good Brothers at uh, No Surrender. So, you know, it's kind of kind of a ticky tack thing. But I just thought it was, I guess, a little unnecessary at the end. Yeah. You know, but um, you know, it's, it's so funny that you say that because, like, I one one thing about the end that stood out to me was actually a little bit annoying. Like people like to make fun of like Tony Schiavone and his we're we're desperately out of time. We'll keep the cameras rolling. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I would have loved that for the way this show ended. Right. And it just it didn't sound like that at all. You know what I mean? It like just, it, like went off the air. That was supposed to feel like chaos, You're supposed to shoot it like chaos, you know, just really make it feel like chaos. And we did not get that feeling. Uh, with that brawl that was going on after um, after after the match. And I think, you know, if you're impact production, you got to look at that as some sort of failure because there was a clear attempt right there that was supposed to create urgency to see what's going to happen next. And right, it was your cliffhanger. Miss. Right, exactly. Your potential cliffhanger. cliffhanger. And it didn't feel like that at all. Maybe it's a sound thing. Maybe it's a production thing. Whatever it is, you know, impact needs to look in the mirror and get that corrected 
I remember when Eddie Edwards won the world title the first time. And, you know, I always talk about I was there. And when he won, they did the AJ Styles thing to where everyone came down and they held him up. All the baby faces ran down. And it was a super cool moment the way it came off in the, in the arena. And on TV, that's not what they showed. They showed Eddie, one, two, three, hold up the belt. And then, uh, you know, Josh Matthews, all right, pop, uh, Shit's Creek coming up next. And they just sign off. It was just right. all the emotion was completely zapped from it. And, you know, I remember, oh, my God, I wish what I saw when I was there is what played out on TV. Because it was very much like AJ winning his title and everyone came down. There was no nothing coming from the ceiling or nothing. But it was right. It was, it was very well done in that that regards, and I, I I noticed that with this too. It just it just went off the air. Like there was mm-hmm. no lead into anything. They did not do anything to um to hook you, so that it just came off like a standard brawl that you do on a go home show before a pay per view. You know, like yeah. So yeah. Um. All right. Man. Did you think there was anything else from the from the episode? I mean, overall, I felt like it was a good solid episode. You know, again. Uh, like you said, Sean Ross, Ross Sapp tweets it. We've been tweeting it. We've been saying it for the longest time. Impact has just been a good show, you know, like yeah. uh, not knocking your socks off, but a good watch, a good solid watch. And I'm looking forward to seeing what's happening next week more often than not. So I wanted you to talk about something here real quick because you, you actually brought it up at the top of the show, uh, but you didn't, you didn't come back around on it. So you said that there's something that you think might, I, I mean, I know the answer, but you said that there was something that you think might spike the viewership again yeah. next week. Yeah, and I think the thing that's going to spike the viewership again next week is people want to see what Matt Cardona as a heel is going to look like. Um, we, we've we all seen, you know, those of us who uh, consume wrestling on the internet, which is all of us, um, we've all seen, you know, clips and, and tweets and pics of Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green out there you know, on the indies, you know, working the Matt Cardona heel gimmick. And it's always, you know, people just wanting to, you know, like destroy this guy, you know, middle fingers in the air and like all this stuff. People really don't like this dude. And I think that a lot of people are going to want to see this. They're going to want to see it in a place that they can consistently come to and rely on. And, um, and, and yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to cause a spike because people want to see what Hill Cardona is going to bring to the table. And I think over the course of the next two weeks, for sure, you're going to see a true spike in the impact ratings because people are going to be very curious about this uh, Cardona as champion thing and see how it goes. Him with Chelsea, have the, they have the potential to be the most interesting thing on the show if it's done. If they have, you know... If it's done the right way, which by that I just mean if they allow them to do what they need to do, because you know I we see them doing heels on heel work on the indies on Twitter, you know they did a good good job of it. So it has the potential. I'm not saying it's gonna be. It has the potential to be the most entertaining thing on the show. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm, that is something I I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how it progresses quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to next week. I think they're gonna. You know, as you said with Chelsea, I think it's coming next week, and then we're gonna get more of Matt. And you know, they even played into it when Gia interviewed Matt after. He goes, "What's what's Chelsea gonna think?" Right, you know, right, so. right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. So definitely, I think that's gonna be coming. I think it'll be fun to watch, man. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait yeah. to see, oh, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> how big of and disgusting of heels these two can be. I think it's gonna be uh, great because these are two people who have been working as like you know, the baby face, baby face, you know, for forever. And um, just listen, if you ever listen to Chelsea Green talk, like she seems like the sweetest person in the world, like she really does. And so yeah. that means she probably has a lot to let loose on the wrestling fans. You know what I mean? Like, you know, she did an interview with those wrestling girls that I listened to uh, a couple of months ago. And she talked about how like, you know, people would like, you know, cyber bully her um, and call her like the opposite of, uh, they call her like a butter face, right? Like, you know, everything, you know, looks good, butter face or whatever. And like, um, and I think she's got a lot pent up that she's ready to let loose on on the internet wrestling fans. And I think it's gonna be fun to watch. I think she's hot as shit, man. I, I, that just is crazy to me. So you know what? Like, I, I think she has a thing going on. Like, remember the women from like the old ECW? Like, they weren't mm-hmm. like models, right? But they look like you know, like a round away girl. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
you know, like it's somebody who you, you know, you just might see like a, at your local bar or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I do it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is really nice. I've met, I've met her. I've, I've talked to her a couple of times. She's, she's pretty cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, man. So for anybody who is looking for the mailbag episodes, as BQ told you, the mailbag episodes are going to be coming up uh, midweek kind of around the time impact drops just to get you guys ready for the episode. So go ahead, drop your comments below. Um, And if you really want to get your comment read, the prioritization for the comments for the mailbag episode is going to be in the impact lounge engagement group on Facebook. Go ahead and hop in there and leave us your questions. It's been some really fun, intelligent, thoughtful question asking going on in there. So shout out to all you guys who are dropping questions in there. We can't wait to talk about them on the mailbag show later this week uh bq do you have any more thoughts you wanted to drop for the people uh negative that does it for me all right all right all right so um yeah so real quick man like that's 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 all we got for you for you guys today um Again, before you leave, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, drop a comment below, hit the notification bell. Um, if you listen to this on, on a podcast, share it with somebody, drop it in a Reddit thread, you know, where you're talking about talking about wrestling, you know, and, uh, you know, say these guys are the biggest idiots I ever heard or, you know, or, or tell them how brilliant we truly are. OK, whatever you mm-hmm. want to do. But truly, the best thing you can do if you want to help out the show is tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, real quick, BQ, tell the people where they can find you on social. At BQ Speaks on Twitter and uh, at the Impact Lounge on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, you can find me at TW Talking About on your social media of choice. You can also follow my podcast page uh, at Talking About Pod on Twitter. Tweet me. I tweet back. Um, you can, oh, like BQ said earlier, go subscribe to the Talking About Pod Facebook page. Uh, we're going to have some fun guests coming up. And yeah, man, um, you know, thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes out to spend some time with us and talk about this show that we enjoy. For BQ, I'm TW. Peace.